In order to verify and or adjust the tools, you must be able to safely operate the machine, have the tools and other parameters entered into the tool library, and they must be pre-measured by either the ITM or an offline measuring system. The programs already loaded into the controller and have the pods and material vacuumed down securely in their proper location. Another thing we're going to want to verify is that our water curtain is raised so we can clearly see the tool and stop it in time to check it. And with the proper program loaded, we can press Cycle Start. The first tool in our program is Z-Wheel 1. I feel comfortable not stopping to test this tool because we've already used it in many other styles. But I am still going to run it across the entire edge to straighten the edge out so I can use it as a baseline to adjust all the new tools to it. And even though it's tested, I'm still going to be ready to press the cycle stop button just in case something isn't right. Like if I see sparks from taking too much material off. The next tool in our program is position one of our new set. So we will want to stop this one and check it. So be ready to press cycle stop. It's the safest to press and hold the cycle stop button and release it to stop the machine. This way you can watch the tool and just release the button to stop it. Note that if your finger slides off the button, the button will no longer be active and will not stop the machine. So I'm holding the stop button and watching as the tool travels towards the material and then I'll release the button when the tool gets close to stop it. Now we can use a straight edge and lay it flat up against a stone. This way we can verify that no part of the tool will collide with the material. And we'll also take a line of sight down the edge of the material to ensure that this tool won't be removing a large amount. And if the tool looks safely aligned, we'll carefully move the tool away from the material. Start by moving the x-axis slowly until you're sure the direction is correct. And when the tool is moved safely away from the material, raise the z-axis all the way up. Now that we've verified that tool number one is okay to run, we're going to run it about a quarter of the way down the edge. So we'll go choose Block Assist so we can skip the z-wheel. So we'll select the tool in position one, We'll choose Start, and then we'll press Cycle Start to start the program at that tool. And again, we're ready with the Cycle Stop, pressing and holding, ready to release, when the tool gets about a quarter of the way down. And of course, we'd also stop if we heard any unusual noises or saw any sparking. Now we'll save the tool out again, this time paying extra attention to the direction that we're traveling. We'll select the x-axis and then an F1 for a slow feed rate and we'll turn the dial in the negative direction. When we confirm that the tool is moving away from the material, we can increase the feed rate and move it further away and then the Z to bring the tool all the way up. And then we'll move it out of the way so we can see how much material that tool removed. When we dry it off, we can clearly see the mark. And we should be able to feel it, and we should feel it wrap around if the tool is meant to do so. If you want to measure and be exact, you can use a depth gauge to measure the removed amount. The manufacturer suggests a removal amount for each position for optimal performance. Removal amounts are the amount of material that each tool was designed to remove. So that means that the tool before it had to leave that much material to be removed. We often refer to this as stock to be left. 
Let's take a little closer look at this with the program that we're going to run. I find it a little easier to calculate and explain if we reverse the tool order. The fourth metal cuts it to finish size, so it won't need to leave any stock to be left. And for the tool to be able to remove four thousandths of an inch, as recommended by the manufacturer, the third metal would have had to leave that stock behind. And the third metal was designed to remove between four and eight thousandths, so we'll say six. So that means the second tool would have had to leave enough material for both of them, which would equal ten thousandths. And if I choose the second metal tool to remove nine thousandths, the first metal would have to leave nineteen thousandths stock to be left. And I'm going to have my first metal tool remove sixteen thousandths. So that means the tool that I have running before it, in my case, the Z Wheel 1, would have to leave behind thirty-five thousandths. We need these stock to be left values in either the styles in AlphaCam or on our Titan in the tool library. Do not put these values in both locations or the stock to be left will be doubled. Our first metal, we're going to use nineteen thousandths stock to be left. In the second metal, we're going to use ten thousandths stock to be left. In the third metal, we're going to use four thousandths stock to be left. And the fourth metal, we're going to cut our part to the finished size with zero stock to be left. You can enter these values into either location, AlphaCam, or the tool library manually. Or if you enter them into the Titan library, you can use the calculate feature. Here you enter the number of tools in the set, in our case 6, and the tool number that the first tool begins with, in our case 14. Then we just enter the amount we want to remove for each tool, and it will calculate the stock to be left for us, as we'll see in the XY left field. And the values match our calculated stock to be left. And when we click OK, these values get entered into each tool accordingly, which you can verify by going to the tool, selecting Edit, and then seeing the value in the XY stock to be left. So back at our test piece, when we see this amount of 16 thousandths, it means that our tool is set up correctly because that's the removal amount that we selected. So now that we've verified that the metal number one is removing the correct amount of material, we're going to run it again. This time, we'll let it run all the way down the entire edge. We'll use this position one edge as a baseline. Then we can reference the rest of the metals to it. And when tool position 1 is completed, we'll let the program continue to run to make the tool change to grab the second tool. And at this time, we'll be ready with the cycle stop. So we can stop the program when the tool is completely lowered and traveling towards the part in a straight line and before it touches. Then we'll perform the same safety check as we did with the first tool. We'll use a straight edge to verify that all parts of the tool will clear. And we'll also take a line of sight down the edge of the material to be sure that the tool won't remove too much. And if we're comfortable with where the tool will run, we'll safe it out by carefully moving the X away from the material and then Z all the way up. Then we'll have to use block assist to get back to the beginning of tool number two, and we'll run it, being ready to stop the second tool at about three quarters of the way down the edge of the material. 
and with the tool right up against the edge of the material, we'll carefully and slowly move it away in the x negative direction, and then a little faster to get it completely out of the way before we raise z, and then we can move y to move the machine completely out of the way so that we can look at the edge. First, we'll blow off all the water, especially around the area where the tool mark was left from removing material. We should be able to feel a small ledge, and we should also feel it wrap around if the tool was meant to do so. And then we can use our depth gauge again to see if our removal amount was accurate for this position to tool. The removal amount that we used was nine thousandths of an inch. Here we can see this tool only removed six thousandths. So we'll have to make an adjustment in the tool library. We'll go to the tool library and then we'll select tool position 2 and choose to edit it. In the XY tool fine adjust section, we'll see an area for display of any fine adjust. We don't want to click in here. What we want to do is we want to use the Away and Towards button. In this case, we want our tool to go towards the material, so we'll click on Towards. The physical amount removed on our material was six thousandths, and we wanted nine thousandths total, so we'll have to go three thousandths more into or towards the material. The value displayed in the XY Fine Adjust window does not have to do with machine direction, so the negative does not mean that it's going to move in the negative direction. So we can choose Save and Close to save our information, and then we'll go back to our Operate window so we can test our adjustment. But before we do, we're going to want to shift the program so that all the tools remove material so we can accurately measure the removal amount. The program shift is located in your G-code display. Program shift uses the machine direction. I want the program to shift in the X positive direction. I'm going to use the value of 3 16 because that's normally what we remove with our z wheel position number one. Don't forget to make your shift active before you run your program. I'll start my program at the beginning to use the z wheel one to remove the 3 16 inch of material. The z wheel has been proven, so I'll let that go all the way down the edge. And position one, we've already tested, so I'll let that run all the way down. Tool number two, however, we'll stop three quarters of the way down the edge again. And we'll safe it out and then move the Y axis out of the way. Then we'll dry off the material and feel that the removal wrapped around if it was supposed to. And if we measure, we'll see we have nine thousandths removed the value which we set earlier. Now that the second position has been adjusted and verified, we'll use Block Assist to go to the third position tool. Stop and verify it with a flat edge like we did on the other tools, and then stop this tool halfway down the edge of the material. Safe the tool out and move it away from the material so that we can dry it off and check this removal amount, which is six thousandths, the value that we set. And we can repeat the process for the fourth position tool, this time stopping it about a fourth of the way down the edge. Then safe out the tool and move it away from the material and dry the material off, then we can feel and measure the removed amount. And if the value is not correct, then make the adjustment like we did with the tool position two. Sometimes a mirror can be helpful to see the wraparound on the underside. Or you may prefer to release the material 
and stand it up on edge to verify that each position is removing material on the underside as well. And if needed, you can adjust the tool and either raise it or lower it. Here we're seeing that the second tool isn't removing very much material on the underside. I'm going to lower position one to leave more material behind for position number two. So I'll go back to the tool library, find my position one, select it, and choose edit. Then I'll go to the Z tool fine adjust area, and again, I won't type my own number in here, but I'll choose the lower button. I'm gonna lower a very small amount, three thousandths of an inch which was entered into the Fine Adjust display. And then I'll save and close my edit screen, and I can repeat this process to rerun the tools, stopping each one at each increment, and then feeling and or measuring, and adjusting if needed, until I'm satisfied with the results. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thanks.